Hi everyone, it's Emily Francis with Oh My Malta coming to you this morning from beautiful, sunny Gozo. And we're here with Miss Josephine and the sea salt, the family sea salt, Chini family sea salt. And the company is Lely Talmer, correct? Yes, yes. Welcome Miss Josephine. Thank, Thank you, you for hosting you. us this morning. Let's talk about how many years of your life you have been in this exact place with the sea salt. This has been in my family for many years. It goes back to 1800s. In fact, these salt pans we, we are standing on have been chiseled by my ancestors from my mother's side. In 1969, my parents got married and they have been tending it lovingly since then. And we have been working and cultivating the salt for these last 52 years with a lot of passion and dedication. So <laughs> genuine. You know, I used to order big bags of sea salt when I lived in the United States for sea salt baths. And now to live here and get to jump in the car and go and buy locally from the most beautiful place in the world is such a blessing and such a gift. So before we even get started in the story, where can people buy your beautiful salt here on the island? Yes. Um they can visit us here at the Salt Pens or on online. We are online now and in, in Gozo in some local shops as well and even in Malta. In Malta, Malta okay. Yes. So we're in the Chini family here. Chini. 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 And I want to point out, in case we forget, that one side of this beautiful farm is harvested on Mondays and one side is harvested on Thursdays. So I think that's amazing. Always depending on the, the, the weather. weather. So before we get to sweeping and really going in, may I see some of the photos and hear the process that you do? So there are three ingredients that make this the wonderful salt. sea salt. Tell me what those are. The sea, the sun, and the wind. And Perfect. a lot of labor and intensive work. A lot of <laughs> to passion. To have a flake of salt, the plate. So take me through the process. We're gonna use photos for this. So take me through the process. Oh, the process. It's, it's done only during the summer period. We start from May up till end of August, oh. early September, depending the weather. Okay. So every week we have a harvest. We fill the pans nowadays by means of motor pump. Before you move this, this is Miss Josephine right here uh -huh. as a young girl. I've been raised here, you know, and when I was young, my parents used to bring me here. They were working and they used to spend the days here playing and watching them harvesting the soil. Now, I have to tell everyone, it's around 9.30 in the morning, but they've been doing this since five o'clock in the morning. So you wake up every early, day? Early when we have the, harvest. the collection, we wake up early to avoid the scorching sun. So by five o'clock, we are already here sweeping and working in the pans because by seven o'clock it's already warm and you, we can't stand here. So these are my parents. I will go through each picture and explain how the salt process goes. Although it sounds very simple and easy and it involves a lot of intensive work and physically it's tiring. So we have the large pools. We have got about 12 and 350 small pans from where we extract the salt. So first, by means of motor pump, we fill the sea water in the large pools. There we let it concentrate. So after two weeks, three weeks, we fill it in these small boxes. So good wind, good sea water and the sun, it dries and by means of brushes, it's already to be extracted. By day seven, day eight, the salt, it's ready to be harvested. harvested. It, you're moving it by this that has a filter in it. Yes. So the filter keeps any sort of plastic or anything that one might find in the sea out of these salt bins. So if anybody, I've, I've been reading that people have a concern now with, this, with the quality of the plastics and things that have been thrown in the sea which if you're watching, please take better care of the sea and use the trash cans. But in case, if things have been in there, these are filtered to give you the best quality salt. Yes, and we have to make sure we keep the pans clean. We do not step 
on, on the embankments on the side, the technique, how we extract the salt. And we have got to be very, very careful. It's like, like the kitchen table. Huh? That's got to be well cooked. Ready to eat. Ready to eat. Because sea salt predominantly is used for cooking. That's yes, the, they say yes, it's really yes. the big thing among chefs. It's done naturally, yeah? so it contains a lot of sea minerals. It has the, it's so sea oil. salt, yes, because sea salt has trace minerals. Table salt does not contain the trace minerals. So iron, Indeed. potassium, uh, magnesium. magnesium all come in and sea salt naturally. And that's, that's big. So, so this is how we extract the salt. By means of brushes, we literally sweep the salt and pile it in a small pile in the middle. Then we fill it into buckets like this. That's you. That's me, <laughs> filling the, the salt into buckets and then we carry it the traditional way to make the big mountain of salt. So here the salt is already to be used, to be consumed. It's from the sea table to the table. So you have, so I just want to go over this traditional way because this is really fantastic. There's a bar across their back and then it's held by chains and you're holding on each side to keep okay. the body balanced so that yeah. you're not injured. You have to grow up this way and build, build your body and your muscles to be able to withstand this. This is really important, this bar across the back to maintain balance and, and keep your body in, in check. And then we make the big mountain of salt. So here, the salt, it's ready to be used, to be consumed. This is a harvest. We place it on a flat surface, eh? we are, as we are standing here. And then we leave it for a couple of days to keep draining, to keep see seeping down. Mind you, this is the fresh sea salt. It's, so it's very damp and humid in itself. So the more it dries, the better. Okay. When this, we cover it with cloths to protect it from impurities. So after this then, it's ready to be bagged, okay. to be stored. In the past, this road did not exist, so they didn't have any means of transport to carry on the, to take the salt home. So they used to store it in those rooms up there and people used to come and buy the salt directly from here. And now, but you still have a shop. Yes, yes. You have a shop right here, as a matter of fact. So then we bag it into bags, like this. We are bagging it, and we store it at our warehouse to be packaged for sale. So there is no further process, no, no washing, nothing. We just make sure that before it is bagged for the market, we remove the impurities or tiny particles manually. So it's very time consuming. In other words, every flake goes through our hands. <laughs> so that's incredible. It's incredible. That's really, that's to such love. Us, and then you bring quality. it to your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And they say chefs choose it because of the crunchy texture and the stronger flavor than anything that can be manufactured. Sometimes nature wants it back, and this is how it happens when it's stormy. Oh. When it's north wind for 7, 8, the sea will reach us up here, and it's the salt and the salinated water is taken away. This is very frequent in winter, which is good because it cleans the pans, but if it happens in summer, it's very bad because it disrupts our harvest and then it takes longer to pick up, to regenerate, because in the pans where we are standing, there is fresh seawater. And then it takes much longer to dry. This is how erosion happens. As you see, some of the pans are fixed and maintained with pebbles. When it's the rough sea, it breaks the sides of the, of the pans. No salt, no money. It's really incredible because the pebbles to me look like decoration. So to me it looks like this is the Chimi family farm and we want to make it beautiful so we're going to stand out and have these beautiful pebbles for decoration and it turns out that you have made every one of these to fix when the storm damage and it's just incredible to think that even these stones have been built by hand. Because I also want people to know which products are yours. Which ones are the real deal? This is the 
original gozo sea salt by uh, packed by our family, which I earn with my own hands. Shweni is the name of the area here, the, of the location. And we have several packagings. This is the Lele Talmel. We have this one. But these are all the same salt? The same just salt. Different uh, packaging. Okay. Yes. And these, these are the pure sea salt flakes. Every, this is amazing. Every collection, every harvest is different. Nature weaves the salt. Sometimes when it's north wind, the salt dries very flaky, very rough. Okay. So although it's the same taste, the same flavor, it's in texture, it, 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 it's different. Here is the official label. I want you to look for this label when you are buying your sea salt so that you know that it came from the Chini family farm at Le Leli Talmich. Right? One more thing I want to wrap this up with, Miss Josephine, is the value and importance that we want to pass along to our young people in taking care of our environment. Yes, um, we make sure and we strive hard that to keep these salt pans in well condition and make sure to protect it for future generations. And people come here to do their dissertations. Yes. So college students come out here and they learn from you and you teach them to pass along to the future we generations. We students visit as well and I invite everyone to visit us and we explain how it goes. It's, it's very important, I mean, even for environmental studies. Uh, I want to thank you because that's exactly how we got here today, is I found you, I called you, and you were so gracious and kind to invite us here to teach us. It's and our treasure. It's so. just our treasure and I love that. And it just makes me love the Maltese all the more. As you know, I love all things Malta. And thank I you. feel and I say that it's a luxury to know, to see <laughs> done in front of your eyes, being done and taken in front so of your So different. Eyes. And then take it to your own kitchen. <laughs> and now I know which hands it has passed through, which just makes me love the food even more. So I'm Emily with Oh My Malta. Thanks for being here.